Welcome to The Deciding Point, our Cracked Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines happening throughout the tennis world. This week's episode going to focus on the 2021 Wimbledon, all of us tennis fans turning our attention to the year's third Grand Slam. I want to talk not only about my takeaways from the event, but how those takeaways apply to the broader context of what we've seen over the last 52 weeks in the tennis world. In particular, this episode going to focus on the women's side. And it should be a fantastic home stretch. Barty versus Kerber, Sabalenka versus Pliskova, all setting up for a fantastic final few days at the 2021 Wimbledon. With that in mind, let's talk some WTA tour on this show. Westoff, hit those credits. Let's get rolling. There have been so many good stories that emerged from this 2021 Wimbledon, in particular on the women's side. You look at the continued success of someone like Own Jabour. You look at the win streak put together by Angelique Kerber, first time Grand Slam semifinal for Narina Sabalenka. But one of the perhaps most heartwarming, feel good stories of this ladies' singles event the return of Karolina Pliskova to the elite levels of women's tennis. You look for her certainly about as ideal of a draw as you could have drawn up. If you would have told her, hey, your round of 16 opponent, it's going to be Ludmilla Samsonova. Your quarterfinal opponent is going to be Victoria Golovic. She would have signed up for that immediately, but you can only show up and play the opponent who shows up across the net from you. That's what Karolina Pliskova has done. She's yet to drop a set on her way to the Grand Slam semifinal, her fourth of her career, first since the Australian Open back in 2019. And you look for Karolina Pliskova over the last 52 weeks. 26 and 17. She's only made three quarterfinals. She's made it at Rome twice. She's now made the quarterfinals here at Wimbledon. She made semifinals, by the way, of both of those Rome events. So I suppose she's only made the semifinals three times. Rome twice here at Wimbledon. Her first serve, her first serve win percentage, her second serve win percentage, her hold percentage, her break percentage. They're all about 3% lower than her career averages. And of course, coming into this Wimbledon, one of the big storylines was that Pliskova had dropped out of the top 10 in the rankings for the first time in more than five years. She's been a bastion of consistency, someone who has made a Grand Slam final, someone who has been ranked number one in the world and has won over 10 WTA titles, has won them at high levels, has beaten multiple top 10 players consistently throughout her career, has had a serve that is constantly placed in the top five amongst servers on the WTA tour. But you know, you could see that confidence evaporate. And it's not just, you know, the easy thing to say is, well, she just can't beat Jess Pagula. If she could beat Jess Pagula, some good things would have happened to her this season. Yes, that's true. Pagula has been a particular problem, a thorn in the side. But, you know, she's played a lot of tight matches against the best players. Three set losses against the Sabalankas of the world, the Halips of the world. And it's just been, you know, again, that lack of confidence. It's, it's hurt her most in the biggest moments, in those tight three set matches. It's also... You you know, seven years of Carolina Pliskova, the game plan is out on her. These players know how to attack her. And certainly, you know, again, getting her stretched to the outer third, getting her, uh, getting pace to uh, against her and attacking the ball when you can so that she can't be dictating from the center of the court. Everyone knows that's how you have to execute against Carolina Pliskova. It's just very hard to do. And particularly on these grass courts, she's so good at going down the line, hitting behind you and just making you uncomfortable, making you lose your footing as an opponent. You also look at again, the effectiveness of her serve, the effectiveness of her ability to scoop these balls off the baseline almost as half volleys, take them early down the line and have success with that shot. It's absolutely crazy. And yet Carolina Pliskova is able to do it again. You look for her now, certainly you would say semifinals, that's a good result for her. Well, you look at the draw, Arena Sabalenka has never made a Grand Slam final before and the pressures of, of the moment has been something Sabalenka has struggled with in her career. Meanwhile, feels like Carolina Pliskova, despite being the number eight seed, uh, she's playing with house money and she's back into the top 10 after this result. She'll be at number eight next week. That's, you know, again, her ceiling. It's a reminder to everyone. Hey, you know, when that serve is landing, when that first forehand is landing, her hands, her aggression, really, really special racket talent 
for Karolina Pliskova, and the draw broke perfectly for her. And we talk about, you know, I've talked about the parity, the rankings in the top 20, but when we talk about the lack of a dominant force in that parity, it means there still is a creak in the window. And this was a podcast topic we had earlier in the week, but who was the player who held the belt for most, you know, next likely Grand Slam champion, the player who doesn't have a Grand Slam title under their belt, but is closest to doing so. Karolina Wozniacki held that title forever. When she beat Simona Halep, it felt like it was a metaphorical passing of the belt over to Halep. Well, then Halep got it off her chest, and it immediately went to Karolina Pliskova. And to be honest, it's probably stood with her ever since. Madison Keys flirted with it certainly a bit as well, but... Pliskova's ceiling, her best, was good enough to win a Grand Slam, and she could never get over the finish line. And before the Osakas, the Adrescus, the Kennans, the Shiantex of the world assert themselves as the dominant force in women's tennis, you still have a two-year creek. You know, 2019, 12 different semifinalists. 2021, 12 different semifinalists through the first three Grand Slams of the year. Carolina Pliskova can take advantage of that fact. This is the window. This is the opportunity none of us expected, and perhaps that lack of pressure was a blessing for her because it allowed her to play freely, work her way into the tournament. She now has a golden opportunity. Again, we don't know the health of Barty. She withdrew from her last tournament, didn't play for a month between the French Open and Wimbledon. How does she respond this late in the event? How does Sabalenka handle, handle the pressures of the semifinals? Angelique Kerber hasn't been in a slam final in a while. And again, this 10-match win streak kind of came out of nowhere. So it does feel like a pathway for Pliskova to this title exists if she can get it. What a story that would have been. We would have some very fun discussions after this Wimbledon, but more than anything else, with the summer hard courts coming up, surfaces and events that Karolina Pliskova has had a ton of success on in her career, for her to bank this sort of win, bank this sort of confidence, that's a huge factor in the remainder of this 2021 season, and it's something we are all going to have to note as the rest of the year unfolds.